Ladies and gentlemen, the next session is titled The Constitutional Right to Education from Access to Quality Learning for All. The moderator for this session is Ms. Bela Raza Jamil. The session will be scheduled for 60 minutes with the last 15 minutes reserved for questions and answers. I'd like to request you to please put your phones on silent or switch them off. The moderator, Ms. Bela Raza Jamil, is a public policy specialist. She leads a citizen-led learning and accountability initiative the annual Status of Education Report survey in Pakistan, and is also the founder of the Children's and Teachers Literature Festival. Bela has worked extensively in the areas of curriculum reforms, early childhood education, teacher education, community-based initiatives for education access and quality, district education planning, local governance, technical vocational education in three continents and across several countries. I now ask Bela to begin the session. Thank you. Can you hear me? Well, um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, to do this session, which is, you know, a real passion for me. And then to have such an eminent um, group of panelists, you know, makes my task very easy and uh, will certainly be provocative, I hope. Provocative enough to lead to some action. Uh, because in education, our biggest challenge is action. We thought the way we'll run this panel, and it's going to be a real juggling act, having such eminent people here uh, and to be giving them very small time uh, to be able to say what they have to say and make a statement that will then generate some dialogue. We'll start with having a context for this debate today uh, on right to education and, of course, the challenges that move from access to learning uh, which again is something that I've been pursuing and my teams and, and coalitions have been pursuing in Pakistan for some time. So I like to run by the ASAR, the latest annual status of education report um, so that at least you have a context and then we will get this conversation going. We'll have about four minutes per e for each uh, speaker and then we'll take some questions and see how things go and then see how the conversation uh, can really uh, throw some fireworks, hopefully, um, and we'll end with that. Um, so the Annual Status of Education Report 2014 um, has been, this is the fifth running report uh, each year in less than 16 weeks. We start the survey, the largest survey, covering almost 90,000 households in the country, and from the survey to the launch of the report every year in January, this is the fifth one. Can you move forward, please? Next. So if you look at um, the age group that we are trying to cover, we look at uh, three to 16 years old children. We test children uh, in terms of quality of education for five to 16, and that is a very important age group because that is exactly uh, aligned to the right to education, Article 25A, which says that the state is obligated to give quality education, free education to five to 16 year olds. Um, and the idea of uh, the ASAR is that how does it influence the national debate on education, but I hope more than the debate, the action for education. Um, it has uh, influenced not only the narratives at the local, provincial, national levels, but also at regional and uh, global levels. ASAR is a methodology which is in practice in nine countries of the world. And those nine countries include East and West Africa, India, now Nigeria coming in, and Mexico and Pakistan. So we cover about one million children as a South-South initiative. So it shows what the South is capable of doing. And today in the discussions on the post-2015 debates going on, what will be the successor to the Millennium Development Goals, ASAR has been quoted a lot and has influenced the goal that goes from just access, as you remember, goal number two of universal primary education to actually quality and learning and beyond primary. So ASAR holds Article 25A in the palm of its hands because it talks about the children 5 to 16 and calls the state to account 
uh, as to what it's going to do about 25A. And just to also let you know that Article 25A or the right to education has been enacted in the Islamabad Capital Territory, in Sindh, Balochistan, Punjab, not in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa as yet, and the issue of Gilgit Baltistan and Fata has still to be settled where the governance sits on right to education over there. Sadly, in these, it will be five years uh, for the 18th Amendment on the 19th of April 2015, and that's when we got this amazing gift of 25A as a constitutional, as a fundamental constitutional right, and sadly, no uh, rules have been made, and as you know, laws are of little use until rules are made. The assessment tools for Asar are basic tools of grade two level in Urdu, Sindhi, Pashto, English, and arithmetic, and we will just now see where we stand on the challenges of access and learning according to the 2014 report. Next, please. So just to give you the scale of the survey, almost 5,000 villages and blocks, 93,000 households, we have over 279,000 children covered in this survey. Um, it's a very powerful survey, and the most amazing thing about the survey is that it's people-led, citizen-led, household-based survey. 10,000 people do this, 90% young youth of the country, and I think that's where the power lies. That's where the game changers are going to be. Next, please. And if you look at the national findings, sadly, we have seen some movements, move, next please. So if you look at the proportion of children who are at the, in the age group of six to 10, 10 if we include the Kachi class, and sort of it, it's gross at that, it is at 81% enrolled. If we remove the Kachi class and do just class one to five, it is 68% net enrollment uh, enrolled as far as the Asar uh, survey is concerned and just to remind you it's 144 districts out of almost 148 covered uh, as I said the larger survey and 21 urban centers but if you look at uh, uh, so we see a slight improvement in 6 to 10 of 1 percent but if you look at the last year's data of 6 to 16 years of uh, age children it's 79 percent enrolled and it's the same as 2013 next please and if you look at the province and territory-wise data, you can see that Balochistan is at the bottom at 67%. And you can see where Sin sits and, and Fata and so on, but that's the kind of scale. And this data is available at www.asarpakistan.org. Um, so we come to the issue of quality, and that's going to be the center of our debate today. And that's what Asar does. If you look at last year's data, and we're looking at grade five children able to do grade two level competencies in Urdu, Sindhi, and Pashto, it is 46% for this year, for 2014, compared to 50% last year, a drop of 4% in learning levels from 2013. This is grade five doing grade two level competencies. Next, please. And if you look at the province-wise comparison, you see that Balochistan is, is, has a real challenge in this. It's uh, coming to 33%. Uh, so that's the, your data. Sindh is not far behind. In fact, FATA is better in learning than Sindh and Balochistan in many areas. English, 42%, a 1% drop, again, grade five levels. And if you look at the provinces, next please. You'll see that Sindh is faring at 24%. Uh, so Sindh is really at the lowest rung. And if you look at arithmetic, and we'll stop at that, we look at a 3% drop from 2013 to 40% grade five level at two digit division. Next please. And if we again look at uh, where, where this data set sits, you look at 24% only for Balochistan. I just wanted to give you really as a, a backdrop and to look at also the gender. Obviously, where you'll have these kind of challenges, you will see everywhere that the gender challenge is huge. 
for each learning level in rural areas, you'll see a, a difference of six, seven to eight percent between boys and girls. And of course, girls are more disadvantaged. Or if we go to school type, pe chale, so we will again see that the private sector performs better, in fact, much better than the public sector. And even if we run regressions and control for parental education as well as their class difference, you will still see, see that there is a difference. Thank you very much. We will, without much ado, we will move forward very quickly. And the way we want to do this, because Ishrat Hussain Sahab and Dr. Ishrat Hussain is, you know, now such a celebrity, not just as someone who's taken tertiary education and management education to a new high in Pakistan for what he's done and the innovations he's done at IBA, but truly as an academic, a civil servant, somebody who served in the World Bank with all his degrees and an amazing education and a, and a constant learner, I think it's just wonderful that we have him with us. And if you remember from last year also, and Dr. Ishrat, even at the ASA launches, keeps saying that it's the issues of governance that really are the bottom of this all. But we've heard uh, you, Dr. Sahab, in terms of sharing with us the challenges of governance. We would like to hear this year at the Karachi Literature Festival on what your thoughts are, what should we do beyond the diagnostics to actions for governance. Thank you very much, Bela. I would take you back, and you are quite familiar with the work we did several years ago under the National Commission for Government Reforms, where a commission consisting of six eminent private sector and six government secretaries produced a report after visiting every single province, consulting all the stakeholders, and observing what is going on on the ground. And what we discovered was something which is borne out by the evidence which ASER has been producing year after year. The government schools are in a state of disarray and neglect. And therefore, we suggested that we must have a division of responsibility. Higher education and tertiary education should be in the domain of the federal government. The college education and technical and vocational education should fall under the purview of the provincial government. And from primary to high school, should be assigned to the district governments. But as you know, unfortunately, there are no district governments. If you look at the pay scales, the pay scales of clerks and the teachers were all in the same grade. So if you want to revise the pay scales of the teachers, you have to revise the pay of the clerks who are not doing the same kind of productive nation building work as the teachers are doing. So we suggested that the teachers scales should be delinked from the national pay scales and they should be settled on the basis of the local labor market conditions. I give you example and Zubeda Ben knows this because she is a pioneer in bringing in education in the backward districts of Balochistan. She will elaborate this more. There is a female science teacher posted in Avaran or Loralai or Zo. She gets herself transferred along with the post to Quetta. So you come to Quetta and there are only 30 science students and there are five teachers sitting there. But if you go to the schools, girls' schools in Amaran or Zob or Lorelei, there are girls but without teachers. So we suggested that because the supply of teachers in Quetta 
is quite substantial. If we pay them 10,000 rupees per month, we should pay the teachers in Avaran or in the backward districts at least 15 to 16,000 rupees so that you have an incentive for them to stay and teach the girls who are deprived of science learning. This perpetuation of inequalities and disparities between Baluchistan, the rural Sindh, the southern Punjab, and the southern districts of KP, which is borne out by your report also, primarily comes out of the lack of autonomy and lack of accountability and lack of incentives at the district levels. So if you have this situation where the people, the district in Avaran should de determine as to what the salary scale of the teachers should be, I can suggest that the improvement in the public schools and the government schools will certainly take place. Thank you, Dr. Ishrat. Um, I think um, the debate on challenges of decentralization and devolution. 2010 mein devolution hui, 2011 mein Ministry of Education uh, khatam ho gai. Aur phir ye behes chal rahi hai, magar ye settled nahi hai. Magar ye jo do inke hisse hai, debate discussion ke, we'll hold them. One is what this three-tiered system should be looking like, right from the federal, tertiary and college, coming to secondary and, um, uh, and primary, at the district level and with technical vocational at the provincial level and of course delinking the pay scales to the government pay scale with incentives for teachers. We'll come back to that and I think it's provocative enough. But I'd like to at this point introduce <coughs> Dr. Arfa Sayyada Zahra, who's a scholar, academic and dare I say an activist as well. Um, with her doctorate in intellectual history from the University of Hawaii and her amazing work that she's done also at tertiary level in so many institutions, um, uh, the National College of Arts, the National School of Public Policy, uh, LUMS and so on. She has influenced many, many young minds or what should I say has also challenged many young minds to all kinds of rebellion. We hope that we'll hear more from her but also wanted to share with you that as a gender activist, she was also the chairperson of the National Commission on the Status of Women, and she's currently the professor of history in Formal Christian College. We enjoy her. She becomes one of the great spirit of any festival, whether it is the literature festival or the children's literature festival. So, uh, Dr. Saiba, I wanted to ask you this question. And I think if we have Urdu and Angrezi, it will be better in both of एक बहुत बड़ा इशू है कि अभी डॉक्टर साहब ने यशत ने बात करी डेवलूशन की और गवर्नेंस के चैलेंजेस की और कुछ सॉल्यूशंस की भी मगर अब ये फेस्टिवल को देख लीजिए इस फेस्टिवल में जो लोग आ रहे हैं जो महसूस हो रहे हैं जो सीख रहे हैं और मतलब ये दो तीन दिन ऐसे गुजरते हैं कि पता भी नहीं चलता और सब लोग खचाखच हर सेशन भरा रहता है और वहां से जो एक रूह का एक रिश्ता जुड़ रहा है लोगों का एक हर्फ का रिश्ता जुड़ रहा है एक एक्सप्रेशन का जुड़ रहा है वहाँ पे अगेन पाकिस्तान में फिर से एक बहस उठती है कि बल्कि नेशनल करिकुलम काउंसिल बना दी सूबे चाह रहे हैं कि डेवलूशन के तहत उनके पास फैसले साजी के हकूक होने चाहिए जुमला हकूक होने चाहिए कि वहाँ पे निसाब कैसा बनती कैसा बनता है किताब कैसी बनती है और इसी सारे घोल घुल 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 घुलवाइयाँ में हमें समझ नहीं आ रहा कि ये बच्चों के जो लर्निंग लेवल्स आपके सामने आते हैं ये आपके सामने ही हैं जब हम दूसरी जमात के टेस्ट करना चाहते हैं तो हमारे सामने ये सारे चैलेंजेस आते हैं तो ये जो निसाब किताब सिलेबस इसकी एक बहस है और खाम खाम में एक कन्फ्यूजन है अभी मिनिस्ट्री ने एक और नया नई चीज़ पास करवा दी कि हम स्टैंडर्ड्स भी अब फेडरल सतह से होंगे शायद होने भी चाहिए हमें नहीं मालूम मगर किस तरह से ये चीज़ें ऐसे होंगी कि एक आम फहम इंसान को एक शहरी को जिसको अपनी अगली नस्लों की कुछ तैयारी करनी है को उनकी वेलबींग का सामान मुहैया करना है ये कैसे सिलसिला आगे पढ़ेगा डॉक्टर आरफा सैद बहुत शुक्रिया बेला आपका और बहुत शुक्रिया कि मेरा नाम आते ही उर्दू का स्विच <laughs> मगर मैं ये कहना चाहती हूँ 
کہ جتنی اردو ان کی پرلطف ہے اتنی انگریزی ہے سو ڈونٹ جسٹ بی ڈسیوڈ بائی دس مگر مجھے احساس ہو رہا تھا کہ جیسے جیسے میں دیکھتی رہی ہوں بہت شکریہ آپ کا میں میں کہنا یہ چاہ رہی ہوں کہ کل بھی تقریباً اسی وقت اسی جگہ پر ایک نشست ہو رہی تھی اور اس میں بڑے مقتدر لوگ اور فکر والے لوگ اور حیثیت و منصب والے لوگ بے حد خوبصورت انگریزی بول رہے تھے مجمع میں سے کسی کی آواز آئی کہ یہ گفتگو کراچی میں ہو رہی ہے کہیں اور نہیں آپ یقین مانیں مجمع کا رنگ اکھڑ گیا اور اس کے بعد پھر ایک معذرت اور غیر معذرت کی صورت پیدا ہوئی بغیر کچھ کہے میرا اتنا تعارف کافی ہے کہ میں ایک پرانا پاپی استاد ہوں اور میرا یہ تعارف بہت کافی ہے کہ مجھے اس ملک سے بڑی محبت ہے میں اسی مٹی سے اٹھی تھی اور اسی میں پیوند ہونا چاہتی ہوں میں کہنا یہ چاہتی ہوں کہ آپ کبھی بیلا سے زیادہ شاید وہ دستاویزات وہ کاغذات وہ خوبصورت تحریریں کسی اور نے نہیں پڑھی ہوں گی جو انہوں نے پڑھی ہیں آپ کسی حرف پر انگلی نہیں رکھ سکتے ہم حرف سے لفظ بنانے کے بادشاہ ہیں مگر نہ حرف کی قدر و قیمت جاتے ہیں نہ لفظ کی حرمت جانتے ہیں آج تک جتنا ہمارا نصاب ہے اس میں نہ شہری کا کوئی ذکر ہے نہ ریاست کا کوئی ذکر ہے اور شہری اور ریاست کا آپس میں رشتہ کیا ہوتا ہے اور ان دوسرے ایک دوسرے کا ان پر حق کیا ہوتا ہے اس سے ہمیں کوئی غرض نہیں ہم نے ایک کمال اور کیا ہے ایسی چکا چون کیا ہے ہم نے کہ حکومت اور ریاست کو ہم مانی کر دیا ہے اب ہم سمجھتے ہیں ریاست اور پھر وہ حکومت جو اقتدار میں ہو بس صرف اس کو خوش کرنا ہم سب کا متمع نظر ہو جاتا ہے میرے محبوب جنرل ضیاء الحق صاحب کا کمال ہے کہ انہوں نے مطالعہ پاکستان اور اسلامیات کو لازمی قرار دے دیا جس دن سے آپ پیدا ہوں اور جس دن تک آپ مریں یہاں ایک ایسی خوش نصیب نسل بیٹھی ہے جس نے یہ دونوں مضمون لازمی نہیں پڑھے نہ اسلامیات نہ مطالعہ پاکستان اور میں بڑے وسوق سے کہہ سکتی ہوں کہ ہم بہتر پاکستانی اور بہتر مسلمان ہیں بنیادی وجہ یہ تھی بنیادی وجہ یہ تھی کہ یہ جو اسلامیات کا لفظ تراشا گیا اور پھر ایک اسلامی لوگ آنے لگے پھر ایک اسلامی وضع ہونے لگی اور اب ہم ماشاءاللہ ایک اسلامی تہذیب کے نمائندے ہوئے تہذیب مذہب کی قدروں کی بنیاد پر ہوتی ہے مذہب کی یونیفارم کی بنیاد پر نہیں اگر مذہب قدریں متعین نہیں کر پاتا تو مذہب کچھ نہیں کر اس لیے ہم سب نے بچپن میں دینیات پڑھی تھی دینیات پڑھی تھی دین کو سمجھتے تھے قدروں کو سمجھتے تھے اور اس میں یہ بھی سمجھتے تھے کہ جتنی مخلوق ہے پروردگار کی وہ سب اس قابل ہے کہ اس کی عزت کی جائے ہم ایک دوسرے کو برداشت نہیں کر رہے پاکستان بنا اس لیے تھا کہ ہم ایک جگہ جمع ہو جائیں گے جس قدر تفریق ہم پاکستان بننے کے بعد ہوئے ہیں اتنے انیس سو سنتالیس سے پہلے نہیں تھے ہم نے کیا ثابت کیا ہے کہ یہ جو ہمارا نعرہ ہے ہم جو آپ دیکھیے زبیدہ سے ہماری اس پر پہلے گفتگو ہوئی ہے وہ گواہ ہیں بیلا گواہ ہیں جیسے ہی کوئی نئی حکومت آتی ہے سب سے پہلا جو نصاب بدلتا ہے وہ مطالعہ پاکستان اور اسلامیات کا ہوتا ہے تمام کارکنان تحریک پاکستان بدل جاتے ہیں ہر حکومت کے مزاج کے ساتھ یہ تو ہے تمام اراکین اسلام کی وقت اور تکریم بدل جاتی ہے بدلنے والی حکومت کے ساتھ اور پھر ایک ایسا طبقہ پیدا ہوتا ہے جو آج کل آپ کو یہ یقین دلا رہا ہے کہ نعوذ باللہ اللہ ایک پروردگار کی سمجھ میں بھی کچھ اتنا نہیں آتا جتنا وہ سمجھتے ہیں آپ اپنے بچے کو شروع اور یہ اچھا اسلامیات کا ایک اور معاملہ ہے آپ اردو پڑھیے اسلامیات پڑھ رہے ہیں فزکس پڑھیے اسلامیات پڑھ رہے ہیں سائنس پڑھیے بایولوجی پڑھیے اسلامیات پڑھ رہے ہیں یعنی 
ادب میں تو خیر گنجائش ہی نہیں رہی سوائے اس کا مطلب یہ ہے کہ ہم اس قدر بے یقین مسلمان کیوں ہیں کہ ہر چیز پر ہمیں پہلے ایک لیبل لگانا ہوتا ہے کہ ہم پر وہ وقت بھی گزرا ہے جب ایک خاتون چیئر پرسن ہوئی پنجاب ٹیکس بک بورڈ کی نام لینا بیجا ہے اور میرے محبوب جنرل یہاں زیاؤ الحق صاحب نے ایک کمیشن بھیجوایا کہ گواہی دیں کہ یہ جو اس وقت کا نادر ترین نصاب ہے وہ کس قدر اچھا ان خاتون نے دعویٰ کیا کہ جناب ہم نے تو پوری سائنس اسلام سے منتبق کر دی اچھا میرے جیسے حیران ہوئے کہ پہلے سائنس میں ایسی کیا بات تھی جس کے اسلام سے کوئی جگڑا تھا کہنے لگے مجھے وقت دیا جائے میں کتابیں لے کر آتی ہوں کتابیں آئیں میں لطیفہ نہیں سنا رہی ہوں یہ دو گواہ موجود ہیں انشاءاللہ جب آکسیجن ماشاءاللہ ہائیڈروجن سے مل جائے گی تو سبحان اللہ پانی بن جائے یہ میں میں لطیفہ نہیں سنا رہی ہوں یہ نصاب کا جملہ ہے جب میری باری آئی کہ میں ان سے کوئی سوال پوچھوں تو میں نے انتہائی بدتمیزی کی جو میں بہت کم زندگی میں کرتی ہوں کہ اس کتاب کے تحریر ہونے سے پہلے کس کے والد ماجد کے حکم سے پانی بنتا تھا جو ایک ہمیں تکلی ہم قانون فطرت کو دین فطرت کے برابر لاکے نہیں کھڑا کر سکتے ہمیں اس کے درمیان ایک آپ تاریخ پڑھ لیجئے آپ یقین مانیے کہ مسلمانوں کے مقدر میں صرف عزت صرف شان و شوقت صرف بہادری اور حساب کی کتاب زبیدہ اس کی بھی گواہ ہیں اور میرے ادھر بھی گواہ آٹھ پسٹول بنائے گئے آٹھ دس بندوقیں دس دو گرینیڈ آپ بچے کو کیا سکھا رہے ہیں یعنی اگر اسے دس گننا ہے تو پہلے دس بندوقیں ہوں آٹھ گننا ہے تو آٹھ پسٹول ہوں دو گرینیڈ ہوں اور ان پرویز ہود بھائی موجود ہیں انہوں نے اور میں نے مل کے بہت سا یہ اس طرح کا گناہگار کام کیا ہے قائدے شروع ہوتے ہیں تے سے پاجی تے سے تلوار تے سے ٹینک اچھا وہ تلوار بھی سمجھے گا ٹینک بھی سمجھے گا پاجی کیسے سمجھے گا اچھا بھلا ایک آدمی کی شکل ہے مگر صرف ایک فرق ہے اس آدمی کے داڑی نہیں ہے چونکہ داڑی نہیں ہے اس لیے وہ پاجی میں نے ان چیئرمن صاحبہ سے سوال پوچھا تھا کہ حضور اگر داڑی شرط اسلام ہوئی تو انڈونیشیا کے چین کے ملیشیا کے مرد کہاں جائیں گے ساری عمر کوشش کرتے ہیں تو تین بال اگتے ہیں اگر آپ یہ شرط رکھ رہے ہیں کہ ہر آدمی کے کو مسلمان کہنے سے پہلے اس کی تھوڑی کے نیچے مٹھی رکھ لیجے شرط یہ ہے کہ ہماری توجہ صرف ظاہر پر ہے تعلیم کا کام ظاہر بدلنا نہیں ہوتا تعلیم باطن بدلتی ہے اندر بدلتی ہے ہماری کوئی تعلیم ہمارا باطن نہیں بدلتی ہم جتنے خبیص جتنے بے ایمان پہلی جماعت میں داخل ہوتے ہیں مجھے معاف کر دیجئے کہ اتنی آخری سے نکل آتے ہیں وہ ایک لفظ آج کل انگریزی کا کس قدر ہے پلے جیاریزم دو کتابوں سے لیں تو چوری ہے بیس کتابوں سے لیں تو تحقیق ہے تعداد بڑھاتے جائیں اب آپ کا میار جو ہے وہ تعداد بڑھانے پر ہو گیا اقدار بڑھانے پر نہیں ہوا تو جو معاشرے مقدار کے شکاری ہو جاتے ہیں وہاں مذہب بھی قدر نہیں رہے آپ دیکھئے کیا اچھی بات آپ کو بتاتے ہیں اگر تم یہ بات ستر دفعہ پڑھو گے تو تمہیں ستر ہزار کے برابر انام ملے گا میں تو دیوانی ہو جاؤں اپنے اللہ کو یاد کرنے میں سارا دن یہ مہاجن کا کھاتا کھول کے میں سوچتی ہوں کہ مجھے کوئی یہ بتائے کہ تم خدا کی اس دنیا پر یقین کرو گے اور اس یقین پر اس طرح عمل کرو گے جس طرح دین فطرت کہتا ہے تو ترقی عزت منزلت قدر و قیمت تمہاری بات ہوگی جو آپ پڑھا رہے ہیں جس پر کے بنیاد ہے آپ کی تعلیم آپ کا نصاب وہ لطیفے زیادہ ہے اور نصاب کے معنی کیسے اچھے ہیں جو چیز اندر نصب ہو جائے جسے آپ کھینچ کے باہر لانا چاہیں تو نہ نکل سکیں جو بنیاد بنے آپ کی 
مگر ہم ایسے اچھے ہوا میں محل بنانے والے لوگ ہیں بنیاد پہ ہم نے کبھی یقین نہیں کیا آپ اس وقت کت کمال دیکھیے جو نیا پاکستان بنا رہے ہیں اس وقت مدتوں سے بن رہا ہے پتہ نہیں میری زندگی میں بنے گا یا نہیں اس صوبے میں جہاد پھر واپس آ گیا نصاب میں جہاد واپس آئے اب پھر آٹھ توپیں دس بندوقیں دو گرینیڈ یہ گنتی کی جائے گی اس کی بنیاد اچھا مجھ سے بے حد اور ایک آج کل طالبان کا ایک اور طبقہ پیدا ہو رہا ہے جنہیں میں طالبان کے معذرت خواہ کہتی ہوں وہ سارا دن طالبان کو بچانے کی فکر میں رہتے ہیں کہنے لگے دیکھئے انصاف کتنا اچھا ہوتا ہے ان سے آپ جا کے کہیے کہ فلان شخص نے مجھے تکلیف پہنچائی وہ اس کی گردن اڑا دیتے ہیں میں نے کہا آپ میرے سامنے کھڑے ہوئے مجھے تکلیف پہنچا رہے ہیں انتہائی جہالت کی بات کرتے ہوئے اجازت ہے آپ کی گردن اڑا دیتے ہیں بہت بہت شکریہ بڑی نوازش بہت بہت شکریہ ڈاکٹر آرفہ اچھی بات ہے کہ تنز مزا فلسفہ ایکشن یہ سب ریکارڈ ہو رہا ہے اور امینہ کی بہت مہربانی ہے اور اکسیڈ یونیورسٹی پریس کی کہ یہ سب کیا سب ویڈیو آپ کو ڈاؤنلوڈبل ملے گا بھی تو یہ چیزیں ہم بھولیں گے انتہائی اسلامی لیٹریچر فیسٹیول ہے آپ کا آپ کی آخرت کا انتظام تمام ریکارڈ ہے اور یہ بتاتے چلوں دو ہزار چھے میں ناشنل کرکلم بنا اور آج کل وہ امپلیمنٹ کہیں ہو رہا ہے آٹھ برس اور سندھ میں شاید دوسرا سال ہے اس کی امپلیمنٹیشن کا بلوچستان میں پہلا سال ہوگا اور مطلب عمل کا گیپ اتنا بڑا ہے اور جو نصاب اچھا اگر کرکلم بنا ہے تو جو ٹیکس بکس بنی ہیں اس کا اس کے ساتھ تعلق نہیں ہے جو ٹیچرز تیار ہوئی ہیں ان کا اس کے ساتھ تعلق نہیں ہے اور جس طرح سے اسیسمنٹ لی جاری ہے بورڈز میں اس کا کسی کے ساتھ تعلق نہیں ہے تو یہ this is the big challenge ایک national calamity ہے اور اس national calamity کو ہم کس طرح سے address کرتے ہیں اس سے بہتر کون جانے گا زبیدہ جلال سے بہتر زبیدہ جلال کی اصل پہچان تو ایک activist اور social worker کی ہے من سے جہاں پہ ایک انہوں نے ایک پورا ایک سلسلہ ایک سوشل موومنٹ چلائی بلوچستان کے لیے اور اس کے بعد کیچ سے چلتے چلتے کوئٹا اور پھر اسلام آباد آنا اور پھر واپس کوئٹا چلے جانا یہ یاترہ ان کی چلتی رہے گی مگر زبیدہ جلال فیڈرل منسٹرز بھی رہ چکی ایڈوکیشن کی بھی ویمنز ڈیولپمنٹ کی سپیشل ایڈوکیشن کی اور آج کل چیئر پرسن ہے پاکستان پرائمری ہیلتھ انیشیٹیو بلوچستان کی آنری ڈاکٹریٹ بھی ہے یونیورسٹی اف ایسٹ لندن کی وغیرہ وغیرہ مگر زبیدہ سے میں پوچھنا چاہتی ہوں خصوصی طور پہ کہ ایک نیشنل کرائیسس ہے اور اس نیشنل کرائیسس میں ہمیں معلوم ہے کہ ہمیں ہمارے پاس ڈیولوشن کا توفہ بھی ہے اور بلوچستان میں خصوصی طور پہ حالی میں لوکل گورنمنٹ کے الیکشنز ہوئے ہیں the only province where we've had local elections local governments now تو یہ بتائیے کہ اس national crisis کو اور بلوچستان کے بھی آداد و شمار آپ کے پاس ہیں learning کے what do you think you know Zubaydah how are we going to go the next step and I don't want you to just confine to بلوچستان but also at the national level how do you respond to a national crisis on learning within with the lens of a province or the nation thank you Bela آپ سب کو سلام علیکم وعلیکم سلام میرے خیال میں بیلا with all my experience and you know the ground realities اور جیسے آپ نے کہا کہ social activist میں سمجھتی ہوں as a practitioner also more than a policy kind of person I believe in practice and action اس میں constitutionally ہم نے دیکھا ہے 1973 کی constitution میں we have the اگر وہ ٹرم میں استعمال کروں right to education universal primary education کے حوالے سے exactly it's very much there اسی طرح 25A right to education اور صوبوں میں بھی جیسے آپ نے ذکر کیا ڈاکٹر صاحب نے اور میری بہن اور I think one of my ideal persons also ڈاکٹر عرفہ سعیدہ نے کہا you see policies ہیں 
law bhi hai acts bhi pass hue hain but why don't we see the change kyun wo jo tabdili sahi tabdili not the <laughs> slogan tabdili jo hum dekhna chahte hain on ground wo kyun nahi ho pa raha so i find uh, subon pe bhi cheezon ko chhodna is not possible or specifically jab hum balochistan ke hawale se baat karte hain असर में दिखाया गया है एंड इट्स प्रूवन क्योंकि असर की जो सर्वे है वो एक ऑथेंटिक ऑन ग्राउंड सर्वे है ये नहीं है कि बच्चे या रिसर्चर्स कहीं बैठ के फॉर्म्स फिल कर रहे हैं बट ऑन ग्राउंड है सो इट्स प्रूवन के एक्सेसिबिलिटी के हवाले से आप देखेंगे कि सिर्फ चार परसेंट बच्चियों की जो हैं बलोचिस्तान में हैव दी एक्सेसिबिलिटी टू सेकेंडरी सेकेंडरी एजुकेशन रूरल में रूरल में स्पेसिफिकली इसी तरह बाकी सूबों का है तो कुछ मैं समझती हूँ कुछ जिम्मेदारियाँ नेशनल लेवल पर होनी चाहिए टू सपोर्ट प्रोविंस विच आर लीस्ट डिवेलप्ड चाहे रूरल सिंध की हम बात करें या सदन पंजाब जैसे डॉक्टर साहब ने मैंशन किए बलोचिस्तान ओवरऑल कोटा को छोड़ के एंड देन वी हैव खैबर पख्तनख्वा फाटा है और गिलगित बल्तिस्तान एंड ऑल दोज एरियाज हमने अपने वक्त में जो हमारा पाँच साल हमारी जो जिम्मेदारी थी उस वक्त जो हमने किया है कि डेवोल्यूशन की भी बात हुई थी वी हैड डेवोल्यूशन ऑन ग्राउंड नाजमीन थे वी वॉन्टेड दैट एम्पावरमेंट ऑफ सिटीजन्स के अपने फैसले खुद करें और वो चला भी तीन से चार साल पाँच साल मेरे ख्याल में डॉक्टर साहब इफ आई एम नॉट रॉन्ग एंड वी सॉ अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ दैट यू नो ट्रिकलिंग डाउन अफेक्ट के एजुकेशन में भी जो ना मतलब फेडरेशन वॉज देयर हम सपोर्ट कर रहे थे हम स्टैंडर्ड्स बना रहे थे चाहे क्वालिटी एजुकेशन की हमने बात की एंड ऑल अक्रॉस द बॉर्डर नॉट ओनली प्राइमरी की बल्कि ऑल द वे टू हायर एजुकेशन का हमने किया फेडरेशन की कुछ जिम्मेदारियां मैं समझती हूँ होनी चाहिए एंड देन वी लीव द इम्प्लीमेंटेशन टू द प्रोविंस एंड देन फर्दर डाउन टू द डिस्ट्रिक्ट गवर्नमेंट्स यहाँ मैं खासकर बलोचिस्तान में 27 परसेंट ऑफ इट्स डोमेस्टिक बजट पिछले साल एजुकेशन के लिए uh, मतलब दी है We know that uh, with all good intentions, Chief Minister साहब ने ये decision किया है इसी तरह हमारे जो advisor to uh, to the Chief Minister Raza Mahmud Badej with good intentions, secretary बहुत अच्छे इंसान और सम जो ऐसा बंदा जो change लाना चाहते हैं और on ground देखना चाहते हैं But unfortunately, in spite of these last two years, we we are not seeing anything happening. सो आई फील के फेडरेशन की कुछ जिम्मेदारियाँ एडिशनैलिटी कुछ स्टैंडर्ड्स होनी चाहिए एंड ऑन ग्राउंड भी गवर्नेंस के जो इश्यूज हैं उसमें अगर उनको सपोर्ट चाहिए द फेडरेशन एज अ नेशनल बिकॉज आई फील एजुकेशन इज नॉट अ डोमेस्टिक इशू इट्स इट्स फॉर पाकिस्तान अगर हम पाकिस्तान के लिए चेंज लाना चाहते हैं देन इट शुड बी अ नेशनल इशू एज पॉलिसी एडिशनैलिटी इन बजट सपोर्ट चाहे इंटरनेशनल हों या फेडरेशन की तरफ से हों और इम्प्लीमेंटेशन में भी जहाँ कैपेसिटीज़ की इशू है वन फाइनल थिंग वट आई बिलीव क्योंकि टीचर्स की सैलरी पे शुरू में जब हम आए और रिफॉर्म्स बनाए तो ये सवाल बार बार आता रहा कि जब टीचर्स की सैलरी ही दो हज़ार है या तीन हज़ार है या पाँच हज़ार है तो इज्जत और डिग्निटी और ये तो सिर्फ फाइनेंशियल एम्पावरमेंट में से हो सकता है एंड आई थिंक इन टू थाउजेंड वन डॉक्टर साहब वेन बी सेड कि सिविल सर्विसेज में एवरी ईयर फिफ्टीन परसेंट इंक्रीज ऑल अक्रॉस सिर्फ टीचर्स ने बट ऑल सिविल सर्वेंट्स टूडे जो नाइनटीन नाइन्टी नाइन या टू थाउजेंड में टीचर दो हज़ार लेती थी और लेता था वो टीचर की सैलरी पैकेज हैज गॉन अप टू सिक्सटी सेवेंटी एंड मे बी हंड्रेड प्लस लेकिन क्यों काम नहीं हो रहा वाई हैवेंट वी सीन मनी इज देयर रिस्पेक्ट अगर पैसों से आना है तो पैसा तो मिल रहा है तनख्वाहें बढ़ गई हैं 
then why don't we see the change? So this is a thought I, th I, I would like to leave with the, uh, with the audience here and maybe we discuss, come back. Why are things not changing? Why are things not changing? And Amina Sayyid, who has no doubt of her, but she has so many firsts to her. She is the first president-elect of the 150-year-old Overseas Investors Chamber of Commerce and Industry. The first woman to be awarded the OB and the knighthood, the French knighthood. She is also the first person actually to have started this movement of literature festivals in Pakistan. And I'm so honored that she's also the co-founder of the Children's Literature and the Teacher's Literature Festival also. Or I want to ask this question that a lot of years ago, Barbara Ali Sahib said that we have grown up as much as we have grown up. We have never seen this country that textbooks are only one of the people. We had a curriculum here where we had a curriculum. And then the textbooks flourished and we had to be able to be competent to those level of competencies as in the national curriculum. And I know Amina has been also an avid supporter of this. There was a muddled policy on this whole issue of curriculum and delinking textbook production from this whole business of a monopoly of the textbook board. I don't know where we are, and Amina, but also in context of the amazing literature festivals that you lead in this country, tell me, you know, I, you, where is this conversation going? And how would you see things changed? Because I believe that soon we will have another round of the national curriculum. And this may be a good platform to trigger some inputs for that debate. Amina. Thank you, Bela. Um, I think I'll just mention three main topics that are always on my mind. I mean, these are at a macro level, which I feel can bring about some improvement in education. One is governance particularly of state schools. The second, of course, is textbooks, as you said, Zubeda. And I feel the third greatest need for us is enrollment. For governance, I will say very quickly that um, there's a think tank in Karachi called Manzil, which has just launched a report on the state of education in Sindh. And they found that of all the districts in Sindh, Larkana, uh, with regard to education, Larkana was the best performing. And the worst performing was Tatta. And then they tried to analyze the reasons. And they went over it. They were visited those schools and those areas. And they found that the EDO, or the education officer, in Larkana was very engaged with education, whereas that was not the case in Tatta. They had an indif indifferent uh, EDO. Um, so it actually boils down to governance and management. Because the education officer in uh, Larkana was involved, he was following up, he was visiting schools, standards for the whole district went up. And I think there's, this is something that we need to take note of. And the same thing has been shown in the LEAPS report that was published some years ago. It was written by Tahir Andrabi and uh, his uh, team. And they, were, they also tried to analyze why it, in government schools, teachers who get better salaries than they get in some of the small private schools. They get better salaries, better terms, and yet they don't perform. Whereas in the tiny private schools where they are getting lower salaries, no uh, benefits, they are performing well. Again, they said the reason was management. The teachers in the private schools were managed closely, they were supervised and monitored whereas those in government schools were not. Um, so that is the point about governance. I think it is key. I will uh, quickly mention enrollment because I am really depressed. I, uh, Bela, you mentioned the enrollment figures in Asar. And I know that in Karachi, in, uh, for example, the other day I was driving around the Kurangi industrial area in the morning. And, you know, literally I saw dozens of children who were five or below Nange pair, phate hue kapre, or phir rahe hain sarakon pe. And really, we have to do something about this. We have to, and it is a constitutional right, it is a millennium de development goal. The first thing we have to do is get our children in school. 
I think even if we, if they're not getting a high standard of education, even if the learning is not what it should be, they have to get be enrolled in schools. If they're not in enough schools, or and yet uh, we say that it's compulsory. So enrollment is key. We cannot let our children run around in the streets in the morning, all day actually. <laughs> um, now I'll come to my pet topic, which is <laughs> textbooks. <laughs> Uh, I think I will quickly tell you what the system is. Uh, all private schools in Pakistan are allowed to use books of their choice. There are many publishers operating in Pakistan, private publishers. They can choose any book they like and they make their decisions on the basis of, of course, the quality of textbook. They look at the price and they look at the support that the publisher provides. For example, we, I'm sure other publishers also do that. We provide a lot of profession development. And we provide lesson plans and assessment opportunities and uh, now we've gone into digital publishing. So schools actually evaluate all this before they make a decision. Um, and then they choose what they feel is the best. Sometimes what they do, if they don't want to go over through the evaluation process themselves, they look at uh, another school uh, which has a, a good reputation and is doing well and they take their book list and they adopt it in their schools. Uh, which is a, another a good system. However, in government schools, they have no such choice. They have to buy and use the textbooks that are produced by the textbook boards. Each province has a textbook board. They develop and uh, produce their own textbooks. And they are, government schools have no choice. They have to use them. Now, without competition, how can you drive up standards? They, uh, the textbook boards have no competition. They have a monopoly. And we have a monopoly controls authority here. I don't know what they're doing. Hmm. I have mentioned this to them many times, that these textbook boards, and they sell books worth billions of rupees. And yet, they have a total monopoly, and they, they have a stranglehold. And this is one, and these books are substandard, they're poor quality, they're plagiarized, they're not even original, they borrow pictures, texts, they do a cut and paste job. And yet schools have no choice but to use them. Some, and they're also not available. Sometimes when the oh school months. session starts, you, these books are not available. Parent have to, uh, parents have to wait for months to buy those books. Uh, but somehow, I, this is a battle I have been fighting for the last 25 years. I'm still at the same spot. Some ho hope actually uh, sprang in my heart when uh, Zubeda Jalal Sahiba was a minister. She tried her best to change the system. Uh, but I think there was, the forces were stacked against her. Um, now, so very quickly about the literature festivals. Um, I feel that uh, these literature festivals, I actually, I, I, I felt that uh, first, the, my first um, mot motive was that we have such talented authors in our country. There's so much research going on, so much writing going on. And yet, our authors don't have the profile that they need, uh, that they deserve. They are actually celebrities. They are the, uh, the what we call the, the servants of civilization. And, uh, and yet, they were treated, uh, you know, like just about anybody else. And I wanted them to be treated uh, like celebrities. I wanted their books to be read. And I thought the best way was again to connect them with readers and I think our authors also enjoyed that because at some of these sessions they got some wonderful feedback from their readers and sometimes that feedback was negative but I think all feedback is welcome. So the idea was to celebrate our authors and also to uh, get readers interested in books, into reading um, and um, with your permission, mashallah, it has been suc no, successful. No, no, it's been wonderful. <laughs> um, wonderful. And I'm so glad that it was followed by the Lahore Literature Festival, the Islamabad Literature Festival, and I believe in November there was a Festabad Literature Festival, and one was held in Gwadar. And I think this is what Bela and I want. We want these festivals, and of course the Children's Literature Festival, which... Uh, Bela started um, uh, and I was very uh, lucky to be a part of it and also the Teachers Literature Festival again started by uh, Zubeda and uh, 
she took me on also as her partner which was wonderful so bela and i want these festivals to become a movement in pakistan we want them Inshallah. to Inshallah. there should be an outbreak of Absolutely. festivals I and that is the whole light so please wherever you know and they should be held in uh, neighborhoods in different Absolutely. towns and villages uh, and it seems as if the movement is taking root inshallah thank you so much but very quickly moving on and i just wanted to share ke asar ke results dikha rahe hain ke jis par humne is saal humne dekha hai ke 4 faisad public sector se bacche uth ke private sector mein gaye and we've seen in rural areas private private sector now 30% and opposite we see private sector 70% in urban areas now i want to uh, our last speaker is sabrina daud and with everybody's permission hum is session ko 5 minute aur khinch denge ek bach ke 37 minute pe isko khatam karenge aur sabrina is of course um, and this is the next generation we see her as the ceo of the daud foundation which is doing a lot of education projects including the ksbl and the mariam daud school of visual arts at the beacon house national university so of course she has tremendous responsibilities and possibilities for enterprise as um the ceo of the daud foundation but she is also running the daud very famous daud public school which recently hosted the teach for peace festival as well um she started anthropology and law at the london school of economics and has done a masters in medical anthropology at the university of college of london so sabrina you know we want to hear from you look at this challenge look at some of the solutions what do you think should happen and i think we need to really mobilize as many young people as possible and young leaders as possible bela pa when i was actually invited to this um panel i was quite worried and scared because there are all these illustrious people and i'm nobody really and meri pareshani to badhti gayi because i started reading the asar reports and i started looking at all these different articles written about the state of education in pakistan and really yesterday night i was in tears not only because i was scared but because the numbers that were being thrown at me was just so alarming but this whole especially since the end of last year there's just been one thing that's really been i mean it this worry has been growing as time progresses and i started reading up on it the thing that you know we have our usual problems dearth of teachers you know low engagement of the government in 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 2% of the gdp being used in education and all that all of these things that other countries have faced but what fa pakistan faces more than any other country is a number of terrorist attacks especially on schools they say that the global coalition of pro to protect education of attack places 919 attacks on schools between 2009 and 2012 and on 16th of december of course we visit we witnessed how children were also um attacked and what we see now is that every week there be more and more attacks you saw the attack last week in karachi in gulshan schools then a um, Chris christian school in peshawar was also um, mobbed and this is just growing to such a large number that i feel and i hear people talk about how they're scared of sending their children to school how they're scared of um where the children will get educated from and as what i started doing was i started looking up all the other things that we were uh, we see in the media and that's been showing us that in the taliban when it controlled um, sawat in uh, 2007 120000 girls were not able to go to school and 88000 teachers were not allowed to teach and this fear still exists in the sawat valley today so the fear is really raging th to us which is really stopping the access to schools for a lot of kids now coming to the quality of education which you you were talking about how important is this and asar really looks at the demographics the school, school, uh, student proficiencies the availability of uh, facilities in schools and all that but what it doesn't do is it doesn't tell us about how the terrorism has impacted schools and what i see now is that the schools have become scared to teach they have become scared to teach there was um, in kpk objections have been raised against um, secular chapters um, raja dahir rajit singh historical figures have been 
taken out of the curriculum. You see that there was blasphemy charges in a school in 2012 in Lahore because a teacher just happened to misquote or miscopy a text. They raided the school. They burnt, vandalized it. They burnt the property. They took out an FIR against the principal. In 2013, another school in Lahore, the, there was, they were teaching a curriculum on comparative religion. The, the, the principal in school was defamed publicly. Nobody stood up. Nobody stood up and said, is this really right? All they were doing was teaching about other religions. What was so wrong about that? And we're seeing that even more and more as time goes on, anything, can really peak the highly sensitized uh, religious sensibilities of the people. What we see from the ASA reports is that the government is not being able to provide access. And any access that's being provided has been provided by the private schools. And now those private schools that pretty much had a lot of autonomy as to what they taught and all that are now being targeted as well. We really, as civil society, really need to think about this is a task for us. We all need to raise our voices. We all need to say that enough is enough. After the Peshawar attack, there have been calls from different NGOs and they're saying 141 schools for every victim. We need more schools. We need more in initiatives like that. And we need to really, really get together and say enough is enough. We need tolerance. We need tolerance in society and we need Thank to be you. able to. Thank you, Sabrina. The call for action on issues of peace, the intersection of quality with governance, access, peace, equity, resources. Asal to issues yehi hai. We have a possibility for a rapid round of maybe three questions from the floor. And if there is someone who can please help, we'll start with somebody at the back there, that young lady uh, sitting next to the lady with the pink dubatta, and we'll take question from there. Maybe we can take rounds of three and see how fast we can go. Uh, we'll be th when we are thrown out of the room, we'll be thrown out of the room. Okay, please. Hi, my name please is Sadra uh, Roke. I'm a journalist. Uh, my question is to uh, Bela Yu and Dr. Hussain. Uh, Dasa report points out that only 7% of uh, girls in rural Sindh they actually complete their matriculation. And when you see that kind of an access to education, they're actually no chances of them ever making it to university. So what do you have to say about this kind of disparity? Okay. A uh, question there in the middle, the young man. Ye beach mein. Either. Either. Thank you. We will come to that. Hello. Yeah. Thank you. Very interesting discussion. My question would be that uh, I see all of you hanging out with the government, working a lot. There's a lot of advocacy happening. But why is it that the government is not responding the way it should be? Uh, what is it that we need to do? Why are we not taking it national? We talk about emergency, but people on the road, standing outside the departments. When is it that it finally finds a resolution? Okay. And one from the front and then we'll try and see. Uh, there's a lady there, second row, second row. Hazreen, salam sabko. Main is adbi mele mein beedbi iska beadab sa sawal karna chahti hoon ki education ki bahut baatein hui. Thoda sa is taraf dhyan dilana chahti hoon ki ye ab zubeda jalal sahiba baithi hui hai. Ye to unne bahut chaha. Islamabad mein main bhi thi, ye bhi thi. Sawal ki dekha. Special education ki sawal mera ye hai ki special education ke liye डेटा क्या कलेक्ट किया जाता है सारे पाकिस्तान से और जो 2006 में 10 फीसद आबादी थी जो रिटायर्ड थी स्पेशल पर्सन थी अब ये बम ब्लास्ट हो रहे हैं सब जगह सिक्योरिटी है तो इसमें और ज़्यादा ये बढ़ गई है आबादी तो इसके लिए डेटा कलेक्ट करना और पब्लिक टॉयलेट्स होना और बिल्डिंग को वो लिफ्ट लगाना ये सब का कुछ ध्यान है लोगों को कुछ शुक्रिया सो वी हैव अ क्वेश्चन वेरी क्विकली अ रिस्पांस फ्रॉम डॉक्टर इशरत ऑन द इश्यूज ऑफ द ट्रांजिशन चैलेंजेस सिंध में बलूचिस्तान में भी आपने खबर देखी रूरल गर्ल्स आर नॉट बीइंग एबल दे आर नॉट इवन इन टू डिजिट्स हु कंप्लीट मेट्रिक हाउ विल दे एवर गो टू टर्चरी वी कैन बिहेप्स हैव डॉक्टर इशरत साहब रिस्पॉन्ड टू दैट डॉक्टर साहब एंड देन वील कम टू दी देखिए मैं 
शिकारपुर में बड़े अरसे आज से बहुत पहले अरसे एस था तो मैंने वहाँ देखा कि लड़कियों को कॉलेज में नहीं भेजा जा रहा क्योंकि लड़कियों का कोई कॉलेज वहाँ नहीं था और सखर जाना पड़ता था तो माँ बाप जो थे वो उनको नहीं भेजते थे तो हमने वहाँ कॉलेज खोला और एक हज़ार लड़कियाँ कुरब जवाब से वहाँ पर आने शुरू हुई तो मेरा जो अपना रूरल एरियाज का तजुर्बा है सिंध का वो ये है कि ट्रांसपोर्टेशन अगर आप उनको प्रोवाइड करें या विलेजेस में स्कूलों की तादाद बढ़ा दें चाहे वो फुली यूटिलाइज ना हो तो माँ बाप जो हैं वो ज़रूर अपने बच्चियों को भेजेंगे ये हमारी सप्लाई का है डिमांड का मसला नहीं सप्लाई साइड चैलेंज एंड थैंक यू डॉक्टर इशर जस्ट टू लेट एवरी वन नो द पब्लिक सेक्टर फैसिलिटी फॉर सेकेंडरी एजुकेशन इन सिंध इज ओनली थ्री एंड हाफ परसेंट नाइन्टी वन परसेंट प्राइमरी फाइव परसेंट मिडल अबाउट थ्री एंड हाफ परसेंट सेकेंडरी हायर सेकेंडरी जब ये होगा प्रपोर्शन एंड ओनली राइट नाउ वीव सीन सर्च इन प्राइवेट सेक्टर सेवनटीन परसेंट प्राइवेट सेक्टर ओनली इन रूरल सिंध तो बताइए क्या होगा कम टू द सेकेंड क्वेश्चन दैट वॉज रेज विच वॉज कि गवर्नमेंट क्यों नहीं एक्शन कर सकती हम साथ काम करते हैं मगर गवर्नमेंट क्यों नहीं एक्शन कर सकती ना पार्लियामेंटेरियंस ना पब्लिक सेक्टर के लोग मैं सिर्फ उसमें जसारत करूंगी ताकि मैं जल्दी से आपको इसका जवाब खुद दे दूं क्योंकि अभी हम लोगों ने कंस्टिट्यूंसीज का डेटा इकट्ठा किया है सिविल सर्वेंट्स तो बिल्कुल हार चुके हैं कहते सब कुछ हैं प्लान सारे बनाते हैं मगर कुछ हमें दिखता नहीं है उसकी इम्प्लीमेंटेशन कुछ यहाँ पे लोग भी बैठे हुए हैं गवर्नमेंट से मगर सो वी हैव टू गो अनादर वे हमने आर एफ और बाकी चार मुख्तलि पोलिटिकल पार्टीज़ की कंस्टिट्यूंसीज का डेटा इस बार इकट्ठा किया तीन दिन पहले वो एक कॉल फॉर एक्शन हुआ कि भाई अगर सिविल सर्वेंट और सिटीजन्स नहीं कुछ कर रहे कम से कम आप पॉलिटिशियंस अगर वोट चाहिए तो तालीम के बदले वोट कितने ही अच्छे होंगे आप कुछ करिए यहाँ पे एन टू फिफ्टी में कुछ काम चल रहा है हम कोई और तरफ से भी इस मसले को पकड़ रहे हैं मगर ये जले भी है वी हैवन बीन एबल टू गेट टू दिर ऑफ इट द इशू ऑफ स्पेशल एजुकेशन जुबैदा वुड यू लाइक टू से समथिंग quickly to it i just want to say asar has done a pilot of just nine districts this time to test the issues of different abilities we've seen a 5 to 8% incidence we'll talk to you later a little bit uh, zubeda you want yes, to say something i just had wanted to say what you just said ke for the first time asar this year has started pilot uh, uh, usme uh, you know they check they and i think they've they got a few numbers okay. also we tested it ki ye ho sakta hai aur is saal ke asar mein sara different abilities ka data hoga to aap khush hongi and we'll talk yeah. it there one quick but, round and yeah. we'll have to finish it so sorry yeah. but we'll start from there because us wo side ignore rahi hai san diego t-shirt please <laughs> ye bhi samne mera sawal ye hai aap logon se ke hamari knowledge to badh rahi hai lekin har गुजरते दिन के बाद हमारा विजडम क्यों कम हो रहा है हालांकि हम लोग विजडम कम हो रहा है इसके ऊपर किसी ने बात नहीं की इसके ऊपर अगर आप वाह बहुत अच्छा सवाल पीछे से किसी को प्लीज अनिल जस्ट अ क्विक कमेंट आई एम अ हेड मास्टर एज वेल इंडिया प्राइवेट स्कूल्स प्राइवेट स्कूल्स आर बिकमिंग मोर इंपॉर्टेंट इन पाकिस्तान इन इंडिया प्राइवेट स्कूल्स यू कैन चार्ज व्हाटएवर फी बट 20% thank you for that 25% of your student population has to be from the scheduled caste pakistan mein when you get a license to operate a school the certificate says 10% have to be free private sector now final comment zero implementation aap kisi bhi elite school mein chale jaiye karachi mein aur aap sabke bachche elite school mein jate honge kahin bhi kahin bhi ये टेन परसेंट नहीं है वन परसेंट भी नहीं है ऑफ पोअर स्टूडेंट स्टडिंग इन एलिट स्कूल कैन बी आस्क वन लास्ट क्वेश्चन एंड एम सो सॉरी आई हमेशा लोग चलिए आप करें फिर आप करें खातून एक enrollment is the main problem and that the first and foremost we have to see to the enro enrollment of children now there could be no matter how much much we try we couldn't disagree with her there but having myself having been associated with many research projects in the sphere of education i have another observation too and that is that in most cases 
parents, especially from the less initiated segment of society, they are not willing to send their children to school because for them, school, children are a productive factor. Children are an economic factor and rather than go to, uh, send them to school, they'd rather have them go out and earn something. Okay. And uh, now, so don't you think that what we really need to do is, first and foremost, publicize the benefits of education to the masses and only, only then, once you motivate the masses to send their children to school, which is something that doesn't exist today. Uh, thank you. Uh, last one. Assalamualaikum ji, my name is Amna Zahid. I just want to give a comment, a line, to Dr. Ishrit, who has talked about it. Is that I represent the Citizen Foundation. I work volunteer. I work for them. Because our ratio is 50% girls and 50% boys. So, what we were talking about is that girls also want education and their parents are so keen that it is just that we have to provide more schools. Quickly, we have just a quick response and then we will take the issue of data revolution. But where is the wisdom? Where is the wisdom? Where is the wisdom? Where is the wisdom? Dr. Arfa, do you want to say something? It's a very good thing. It will be asked from all of us where the wisdom is. You have a very good use of the knowledge that knowledge is not the wisdom. میں آپ سے قدم پیچھے جاؤں گی انفرمیشن ہے نالج بھی نہیں ہے صرف اطلاع ہے صرف اطلاع ہے علمیہ یہ ہے کہ وہ صرف اطلاع ہے وہ علم بھی نہیں بنتا اور چونکہ علم نہیں بنتا اس لیے نظر نہیں بن سکتی جو وزڈم ہوتی ہے تو ویری کوئکلی لوڈ او ورک تو بی ڈان بائی آس سبرینہ ووڈ یو لائک تو کومنٹ آن دے کوٹ آف ٹین پرسنٹ این ویڈر private schools that you may be working in, with, do they in implement? In India, 25% of the school body is supposed to be the schedule, uh, that's it true. It can be anyone, but poor caste. Or the poor caste, whatever. But uh, the thing is that the government provides actual sort of um, funds for this. It provides the funds for, so the school can run and keep its standards up and, and teach these children. So the government works hand in hand with the private sector. In our country, what the situation is, the government doesn't. In fact, it doesn't give us any tax leeways. It doesn't help at all. If you try and put the 10 percent in kitni badi inki list aati ki humare civil, humare bachche hain inko school mein dalo. Just to quickly so, add to Sabrina's comments, in India for 25 percent the government provides per child cost to the school. There may be a lot of contentions as to how much that should be and what ceiling government gives, but there is a transfer from government to private sector to buy uh, places in private exactly. school for the poor. Yeah. Now that's how their 25A or equivalent okay. sits on Bera, right to education. Punjab, aapko to pata hai, Punjab Education Foundation ne bhi vouchers diye huye hain ke gharibon ke bachche jo hain, wo apni marzi ke private school mein agar jana chahein, to unko itnay voucher ki amount di jati hai ke unki tuition fees aur kharche jo hain, wo poore ho jayein. Punjab ne ye kiya hai. Sindh mein kam hai aur Punjab mein do million hai almost bachche through the vouchers Sindh mein we are still seeing at about quarter of a million. We haven't quite gotten where we should be getting. But then the question that was asked on issues of gender and why not equal girls and also issues of poor. I just want to say, schemes are very important. Benazir Vasila is a Taleem program. Jisse again, aapko ek social safety nets ke hisab ek transfer of funds, cash transfers hain for families. Magar question ye hai, wo ja kaha rahe hain. Actually, we have yet to see in the Asar or any survey ke where the girls are being kept back. They're only kept back. And in fact, in Narawal, we saw not only girls more enrolled, learning better, and going as high as they can where the supply challenges are not there. So parents are not holding back girls. They only hold back girls when there's no security. And also, there's a link between educated mothers and the uh, retainment of girls she in school. It. It's she a very strong link. If the mother is encouraging the girl, she will go forward. Uh, we will have to leave this room, but uh, the conversations can go on. I just wanted to say, because somebody told me on a very funny note, that I know you from the road, when you were on the road, 
بیر امرود اور آم چڑھایا کرتی تھی دوپہر میں بھاگتی پھرتی تھی کوئی چودہ لوگوں کے ساتھ اور تم لوگ لگتا تھا جیسے حالی روڈ کو یہ بچے کنٹرول کر رہے ہیں میں پی سی ایچ ایس میں پڑھتی تھی بیگم مجید میری پرنسپل تھی وہ ایک عجیب زمانہ تھا اور آج ہم اس کو یاد کرتے ہیں تو ہم سوچ بھی نہیں سکتے کہ کوئی ایسی بیلا یا عارفہ ہوں گی یا امینہ ہوں گی جو بیر اور ہم چرچ آف کرائسٹ میں ہمز بھی گاتے تھے جا کے کیونکہ وہاں پہ ہمیں مفت کوکا کولا اور بسکٹ بھی ملتے تھے تو ہم صرف اس کی وجہ سے ہمیں مسئلہ مذہب کا بھی نہیں تھا شناخت کا بھی نہیں تھا آج یہ کیا ہو گیا کہ نہ صرف ہمیں مسئلہ مذہب کا ہے شناخت کا ہے تعلیم کا ہے رسائی کا ہے اور میار کا ہے آج ہمارے پاس جتنے لوگ یہاں پہ تھے وہ وہ لوگ ہیں جو ایکٹیویسٹ ہیں انہوں نے کچھ نہ کچھ کر دکھایا ہے میں سمجھتی ہوں کہ یہ قافلہ بہت بڑھ جانا چاہیے ہم اپنے اپنے حوالے سے بہت سارے انفلوینشل دائروں میں کام کر رہے ہیں but I think it needs all of you and many more to join this tribe today I think we have to be out in the streets for every issue that has been raised here for tolerance, for peace, for quality let's take this to wherever we have to and not panic کہ سرکار کیا کہے گی ہم ہی تو ہیں بہت بہت شکریہ آپ لوگ کے آنے کا